this other woman, Peninnah, uh, for to make her fret. This, I love the King James language. It's so polite sounding. In other words, she pestered her and, and teased her, I guess, and, and got her upset because the Lord had shut her womb. And as she did so, year by year, she went up to the house of the Lord, and she provoked her. Therefore she wept, and she did not eat. This just I can just see this. It just sounds like how people act, doesn't it? Isn't that mean? I mean, that just sounds like, a, you, know, you can just easily imagine this, can't you? She's taunting her and teasing her and making her cry about it. Uh, then said Elkanah, her husband, under Hannah, why weepest thou? Why eatest thou not? Why is thy heart grieved? Am I not better to thee than ten sons? <laughs> now, I understand why he said that. This is probably not the right thing to say. <laughs> just from experience, this is probably not the best thing to say. <laughs> Aren't I better than ten? Well, as a matter of fact, no. <laughs> Good as you are, nice as you are. Uh, <laughs> but I understand why he said that. So Hannah rose up after they had eaten at Shiloh, and after they had drunk. Now Eli, the priest, sat upon a seat by a post in the temple of the Lord. And she was in bitterness of soul, and she prayed unto the Lord. And she vowed a vow, and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look upon the affliction of thine handmaid, and remember me, and not forget thine handmaid, but will give unto thine handmaid a man-child, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life. And there shall no razor come upon his head. And it came to pass, as she continued praying before the Lord, Eli marked her mouth. Now Hannah, she spoke in her heart. Only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli, Eli thought she had been drunken. <laughs> now if you read about Eli and his two sons, his two sons were kind of rascals. And so probably he's got the, you know, probably he's just thinking, well, you know, see, this sounds like something his two sons might have been doing. You know, he thought she's drunk, because he sees her there, and her lips are moving, but no sounds coming out, so th she, he thinks she's drunk. And Eli said to her, how long wilt thou be drunken? Put away thy wine from thee. See, it's bad enough that she gets taunted by this other woman, and then she goes to the house of the Lord to pray. And now the, the preacher is coming in and saying, falsely accusing her of being drunk. Put away thy wine from thee. In other words, don't come in here drunk. That's kind of what he's saying. And Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord, I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but I have poured out my soul before the Lord. Count not thine handmaid the daughter of Belial. For out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken hither unto. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. And she said, Let thine handmaid find grace in thy sight. So the woman went her way and did eat. And her countenance was no more sad. Now wait a minute. Why is her countenance no more sad? You know, it doesn't tell us explicitly, but I think it's implying here that she believed that she believed that the Lord had heard her. She believed that her petitions were heard because she went away no more sad. If she just thought she was going through the motions and nothing was going to come of this, she would, she would still be sad. She went away no more sad because she believed the Lord had heard her prayer. And as a matter of fact, uh, He did. We could, we could chalk this up to faith as well, I think, even though it's not explicitly told to us here, like in Hebrews 11. And they rose up early, and they worshipped before the Lord, and returned, and came to their house, uh, uh, came to, their house to Ramah, and Elkanah knew Hannah his wife, and the Lord remembered her. Wherefore it came to pass, when the time was come, about after, uh, uh, about after Hannah had conceived, that she bare a son, and called his name, guess who? Samuel, saying, Because I have asked him of the Lord. Now think about this. Here's another woman, just like we've seen before. We have these pairs. One of them is giving birth, bing, 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 just one after another, no problem with that. We don't even know who they are. They're not even mentioned in the Bible. Why? Because they're born after the flesh, and it was just by human means, there's nothing even special about it. But Hannah was barren, and out of the, her sorrow and her difficulty, she called on the Lord and believed Him. And who does she give birth to? The first prophet of Israel. Somebody who is very special. In other words, um, God brought about His plan and forwarded, brought His plans forward. Now, what can we uh, observe or apply to our lives from all of these cases? Well, God's plan is brought about by us believing Him. Like Sarah, to judge Him faithful that promised. See, these women, notice this, these mothers that I've talked about here, they were not indifferent to their situation. They were not passive. They went to the Lord about it, and they believed God. And God brought about His plan and purpose through a person 
a mother in this case, who was bold enough to reach out to him and believe him. And God brought them sons who were uh, very important in the uh, plan of God. So that's a, that's a word of uh, encouragement. And uh, to say, I'll, I'll, the way I, I meant this to be a way to honor all of you that are mothers. And I'm sure, uh, I, I think all of you are just like that same category, just like Sarah, believe in God. And not only uh, the mothers, but us men as well, we can believe God too. And God's plans are advanced that way.